Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to talk about what layer heights work best for 28mm miniatures on an FDM 3D printer. Now, before we get started, you're going to hear a lot of opinions on this. If you go on Reddit or Facebook and you're, everybody's got a different you know, idea of what works best, you're going to hear a term a lot that people throw out and that is magic numbers. Forget that. That is a horrible term. Um, it is misleading. It does not teach you anything about the process, and I'm not going to use it here. Anytime uh, people talk about your stepper motors, your stepper motor operates in full steps and micro steps. And anytime somebody is talking about a magic number, they're simply saying a full step of the stepper motor. And that's the terminology we're going to use here. I want to teach you what's going on so you have a better understanding and not keep you in the dark about the actual process here. So we're gonna take a look at how the stepper motors work. Um, we're gonna look at the testing I did uh, for standard 28 millimeter miniatures and see what works best. So let's get started. Okay, probably the easiest way to picture what is happening uh, in your stepper motor, how your stepper motor works, is to think of it like a wall clock. Now, in our imaginary example here with the clock, we have 12 positions, 1 through 12, the hour positions. In your actual NEMA 17 stepper motor, um, you have 200 positions. Uh, it'd have 1 through 200 on it. Uh, but for the sake of this discussion, let's just keep to the clock example and keep it 1 through 12. Um, in each of these number positions, the hours, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on through 12, these are going to be your full steps, and these are what people refer to as the magic numbers. And again, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about full steps. Um, simply put, in your motor, anywhere that there is a coil is a full step. So in this imaginary motor in front of us, each of these numbers has a coil at the number. What does that mean? Well, when you have a coil, and you send a charge to it, as in this example here, we've sent our charge to the one coil, the motor snaps and points to the one. Easy. Send the charge to the two, the motor snaps and points at the two. Now, our motors are capable of more than this. These are full step positions. In our real motors and our printers, there are 200 of these. It'd be a clock numbered one through 200. Um, anytime you send voltage to a coil and the motor snaps to it, that is a full step of the motor. That's it. That's all people are talking about when they say magic numbers. Now, here's the thing about the types of stepper motors we use in our 3D printers. They are capable of something called micro-stepping. And micro-stepping is simply the ability to position the motor in between two coils to give it more positions than the standard 200. Um, this is very easily achieved. What it does is sends voltage to two adjacent coils, as we're seeing here. In this case, 40% of the voltage is sent to the 12 and 60% is sent to the 1. The motor then snaps approximately 60% of the way to the 1. It should be exactly, but there's always a little variation because of voltage spikes and things like that. But this is a micro step. Now, what's the difference between the two of them? Well, between a micro step and a full step, as far as accuracy. Well, micro steps are not quite as accurate as full steps because they're being there's two attractions fighting for that position on between the two coils, and the motor's trying to snap to a position between those two voltages, um, corresponding to the difference in the voltages. Um, you know, in this case, 40% is at the 12, 60% is at the 1, so it should snap to about 60% of the way between the 12 and the 1. Um, so, micro steps are not quite as accurate as full steps. There is one exception to this where a micro step is extremely accurate and almost as accurate as a full step, and that is the half step position where the two adjacent coils are both receiving equal voltage. In that position, the full half step, um, it is almost as accurate as a full step is, and so much so that you can't see the difference unless it's under extremely high magnification. And then it's mainly going to be on things like test cubes where you have perfectly flat sides. 
um, even then you're not going to really notice the difference under high magnification on something with a regular surfaces like a 28 millimeter uh, gaming miniature. So when we talk about uh, the Ender 3 and the best layer heights, uh, it really comes down to three of them that I recommend, 0 0.08 millimeters, 0 0.1, and 0 0.12. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why are you recommending 0 0.1? It's not a full step. 0 0.08 is a full step. 0 0.12 is a full step. And the reason for that is our motors have 200 positions. Those 200 positions uh, create a full 360 degree turn of that motor. Now, when the Z motor turns the Z axis screw one full turn, we measure how much it raises or lowers the X axis, the print head. And in one full 360 degree turn, the pitch of the screw will raise or lower the position by eight millimeters. Now, if you divide that by 200, the 200 steps, we get 0 0.04 millimeters as the amount raised or lowered in a full step movement of the motor. So 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12, 0 0.16, 0 0.2, 0 0.04 increments. So here again, we come back to 0 0.08 is a full step position, 0 0.12 is a full step position, but 0 0.1 isn't. Well, yeah, that's true. 0 0.1 is not, but there's more to this when selecting the best layer height for your miniature than just looking at what a full step is. You need to run some tests and you need to see what other issues come into play. What is going to consistently create the best looking miniature time after time after time? Um, and for me, the answer is point one, and I'm going to get into why here as we go through this video. All right. Now, why do I include 0.1 millimeter in this selection? Why not just go with 0 0.08 or 0 0.12? Well, unlike any other micro step, 0.1 millimeter is an exact half step. It's precisely halfway between 0 0.08 and 0 0.12, which means it is also going to be extremely accurate. No, it's not every bit as accurate as, as a full step, but since it is a half step, it is extremely close you will not be able to visually tell the difference with the naked eye. Um, and even under extremely high magnification, you're probably not going to see anything unless it's like a test cube with perfectly vertically flat sides and edges and such. Uh, in a regular surfaced um, gaming miniature, you're really not going to see a difference. So the difference between full step here and an exact half step there isn't any. Don't worry about that. What we're testing for now is just which one is going to consistently give us the best results. This graphic shows you that in a 1.2 millimeter layer height, or not layer height, but at a 1.2 millimeter um, vertical length, at 0 0.08 millimeters of layer height, you're going to get 15 layers. At 0.1, you're going to get 12 layers, and at 0.12, you're only going to get 10 layers. Um, so as you increase that layer height, you get fewer layers in the given vertical uh, dimension and your print is going to look rougher. You're going to start seeing those layers more easily. So in this case, 0 0.08 is definitely the best of the three. You have more layers, you're going to get smoother gradations. Okay, 0 0.1 is pretty close. Once you get to 0 0.12, it starts looking pretty rough. So as far as layer heights, 0 0.08 and 0 0.1 definitely win out. Now, if we look at this graphic here, um, you can see the same thing. I've just demonstrated it with a curve. Uh, 0 0.08 looks great. 0 0.1 still looks almost as good at 0 0.08, but at 0 0.12, it really starts breaking down. It starts getting very rough. Now, perfect layer height, uh, is not the only issue you should be looking at. So what did I do for this video? I went and I printed about 150 miniatures total over the last four months. Uh, these miniatures were all done at 0 0.08, 0 0.1, and 0 0.12 layer heights. Uh, they were done on a mix of Ender 3s and an Ender 5, just to make sure I wasn't having mechanical issues with the machine. These were all done with 0.4 millimeter nozzles. Now, um, what I've done is I've picked out a series of minis that are very representational of the averages here. Um, they aren't the worst that I did, 
they also aren't the best, but they're the ones that came out the most consistent so you can see what's going on. Now, in this first example, there is a Dragonlock Skeleton miniature. It's done at 0 0.08 layer height, and it looks pretty good, but there are definitely some layer defects here. And in this first photo, we'll take a look at these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight significant what I consider significant defects that are going to have to be cleaned up uh, from the hood, the sword, uh, the leg, all of these things, uh, these strings, these little zits on the surface, um, are all things that probably shouldn't be there. Uh, we'll switch over to this other view, rotate it around, and you can see some of these again a little bit better. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of surface defects on this miniature at 0 0.08. When we do the same miniature, and all of these I'm showing in this video were done on the exact same machine, even though I did a lot of tests on different machines, I picked ones, uh, these were all from an Ender 3, or I'm sorry, no, these were from an Ender 5. Um, here's 0.1. Still some surface defects, but not nearly as many. There's only three major ones. Uh, here's another shot, a little bit different angle. And this angle, uh, I'm not pointing out the same ones, but there is a small bit where you couldn't see in the previous one of uh, under extrusion. Uh, that little point there is probably on a retraction that didn't feed quite as fast or the uh, filament hit a snag or something. So this may have been a one-off, but... Here again, it's definitely better than what the 0 0.08 was. Now, we go to 0.12 layer height, and there's even fewer. I mean, there's only one real defect here, or maybe two. I think I missed one here. But it's definitely the cleaner of all three of them. Now, why is that? Well, the reason for that is um, the thicker layer heights will withstand subsequent passes uh, for subsequent layers of the nozzle and the heat given off by the nozzle. They won't deform. On the thinner layers, when the layers deform, they can bend up a little bit. The nozzle drags through it and creates a zit or a blob or a, you know, a string. So in this case, as far as surface defects, 0.12 is the best. But once we get to 0.12 on curves like the head and uh, the hood and the cape, the layer height becomes a lot more obvious than it does at point one. So what I'm seeing on this video and all these tests I've run is overall point or uh, point one layer height really does produce the most consistently good results. It's a great mix of a finer layer height uh, akin to point zero eight, but you don't get as many surface defects as point zero eight. Um, it's got maybe one or two more surface defects than 0.12, but you get much smoother uh, surface gradations on curves than 0.12. So um, don't let the whole magic number thing scare you into using the wrong layer height. Um, Sub-miniatures will pr print better at 0 0.08 or 0.12, and that's just something you have to experiment with. But um, this is just this particular sculpt i did about 40 prints of it uh, i tried four other sculpts just to make sure i was getting consistent results um but for me i stick with 0.1 initially at least uh for printing a miniature because i know can uh, you know time after time it's going to produce the most consistently good results so i hope this has answered a few questions about how your motor works and how to select layer heights for your miniatures on your printer Please click that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and thank you very much for watching.